he said not to do? Very good question. Read. 6.23? Yep. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Because sometimes we say ignorantly, oh, that's, that's just words in a book. That don't mean nothing. You got to understand God is very serious. Read. For the wages of sin is death. Uh -huh. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Read it again from the top. For the wages of sin is death. You hear that, Ray? The wages of sin is death. Sin, you went right here when we went over it. Sin is when you break God's rules. Right. So when we break God's rules, the punishment is death. Yes, even shaving your head ball, shaving your face ball. That's why you see the brothers out here. You see the brothers out here growing their facial hair. Brothers got beards on their face. Because why? We love God. Now, what is it that we believe? It's so Rock 32 and 24. What is it that we believe? You ask what we teach. Now, I showed you that. This is the King James Version Bible. This right here is the Apocrypha. This was taken out by the Protestant church in the 1700s. Read. And what? Is that other one? Yep. There's 14 books here. This was taken out. This is the KJV. This is the King James Version. Got it? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 24. Uh -huh. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments, and he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worst. Read it again from the top. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. So if you believe, you're talking about belief. What we believe, you do what? Take heed to the commandments. That's what we believe. We believe. Do what? Take heed uh -huh. to the commandments. He is he, H E D E. Okay, he, listen to. Okay. So, we believe in God's commandments. Right. That's what we believe. So, I showed you what we teach and what we believe. Those things up. And that's the key to change what you see out here. All of this. We must believe in the commandments and keep the commandments. Like, here's a commandment. Give me Leviticus 21 and 5. Because we got to get lost. We talked about history, and I hope that you got it. It's real brief, but I hope that you got it. Now we got to get the actual rules that we got to follow. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make bonus upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Read it again from the top. They shall not make bonus upon their head. So, the Israelite man, which is the black, Hispanic, and Native American man, the men on this side, the women on this side, we are reading rules that we must follow. Right. These rules is not for everybody. They are for us to follow. Like you have children, right? No. You know people that have children. So when they have children, they have certain rules in their house that these children must follow. Not everybody else. These children that live in this house. So us being God's children, we must follow this rule. Let's read the rule again. They, they shall not make bonus upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So the Israelite man is not supposed Talking to, Mike. to shave off his hair on his head or the hair on his beard. Like we see who do. Like we see these actors, like we see the Caucasian man, like we see some of the Arabs, like we see some of the East Indians, the other nations, the other races of people. God don't care about what they do. He cares about what you do. He doesn't want you looking like that. You understand? Read on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, uh -huh. nor make any cuttings in their flesh. We are not supposed to have tattoos. Again. That's something that we learn from watching the other races. Everything we do, we learn from them. Even how the women dress. We learn that from them. God said don't follow their ways, follow him. So this is a rule that we must follow. Numbers 15, 38. I'm showing you rules that we gotta follow. What if you, what if you don't follow those rules? That's 
That's a good question. You said, what if we don't follow the rules and what? And we do what you say we're not supposed to do. What and we do what we're not supposed to do. Show you the racist. Grace for sale. Get that first. Matter of fact, no. Let's get straight to his answer his question real quick. What happens? This is a good question for those who's listening. What is going to happen if we don't listen to what God says and do what he said not to do? Very good question. Read. 623. Yeah. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Because sometimes we say ignorantly, oh, that's, that's just words in a book. That don't mean nothing. You got to understand God is very serious. Read. For the wages of sin is death. Uh huh. But the gift of God is eternal life Read through it. Jesus Christ our Lord. Read it again from the top. For the wages of sin is death. You hear that, Ray? The wages of sin is death. Sin, you went right here when we went over it. Sin is when you break God's rules. Right. So when we break God's rules, the punishment is death. Yes, even shaving your head ball, shaving your face ball. That's why you see the brothers out here. You see the brothers out here growing their facial hair. Brothers got beards on their face. Because why? We love God. That's what it boils down to. If you love God, you're going to do what God say. It's not about me. It's not about him. None of us out here. It's about if you love God. God says, do this, I'm going to do it. Just that simple. Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. I'm going to show you another rule. I'm going to show you another rule that we are not following as a people. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled, but the whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Read it again from the top. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but the whoremongers Stop. and adulterers. This is a rule that we have to follow. Being God's chosen people, we must follow this rule. One of his rules is that we must get married. Not boyfriend and girlfriend, not sad peace, not... Down, stop. We are supposed to marry our women. Not have sex with them and don't talk to them no more. He said, Memory. Read it again. Marriage is honorable in all. When it says marriage is honorable, meaning God respects marriage. He does not respect boyfriend and girlfriend. Think about that, Ray. Black and Hispanic men, we have a girlfriend. We sleep with her. We get to know her and then. After a couple months, we get tired of it and we break up. Then we get another girlfriend, and another girlfriend, and another girlfriend. Before you look up, this brother that slept with all the women in the neighborhood. But we titled it girlfriend and boyfriend. That's sin, according to God. That's something we don't know. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, uh -huh. and the bed of the foul. Meaning what? What a husband and wife do in the bedroom is their business. If you're married. If you are having sex outside of marriage, you are in the midst of sin, and God will judge you. Right. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So a whoremonger is the brother that want to put his rod in all the women in the neighborhood. He want to smash everything. No way. You say you want to sleep with every, every woman in the world. Right. The adulterer is the man or the woman that sleeps with a other married person. You're sleeping with somebody's spouse. It's some men that wear that like a badge of honor. They sleeping with somebody's wife. God said that sin. Read it again. Marriage is honorable in all. Uh -huh. And the bed is defiled. Uh -huh. But 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 whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You know how God judge the men that sleep around? Take a while, I guess. How does God judge the men and women who sleep around? What's something that he'll do? I want to pick your brain for a minute. I don't get the question. What will be the punishment for being promiscuous, for sleeping around? STDs. Oh, okay. We don't think God is behind that. God is behind it. Why do you think you catch AIDS? HPV. Gonorrhea, because you're supposed to have one mate, not several. What if you don't marry? 
You say what? What if you don't get married? You mean you stay single, you're not sleeping around, you just by yourself. If you can handle that, but let's be realistic. What man and what woman is going to stay single for the rest of their life? Give me 1 Corinthians 7. Let's be realistic. Some people will say, oh, you know, I don't, don't want to deal with nobody. But behind closed doors, all they're thinking about is sex, 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 sex. God has a solution for that. It's only very few men that you read about in the Bible that was able to live that life of, uh, what's the word, celibacy. They never laid with anybody. That was Christ and Paul. Very few. Read. Uh, and Daniel. Daniel was a eunuch, though. Daniel was a eunuch. But yeah, and Daniel. Uh, you can count Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael. You can count them too, because they were eunuchs. They physically could not lay down. Read the book of First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse one. Because we're over the statement. That's not realistic in today's time. You see billboards, half naked women. Every commercial is sexual, over sexualized. Everything is sex, sex. They push a lust all in your face. Nobody's going to just stay single for the rest of their life. So here's the solution. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Uh -huh. Now concerning the things whereof I write unto you, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So Paul said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. So let's read that again. Let's get some understanding. Because I know the brothers listening like, what? What you mean don't touch a woman? It's a reason behind what he's saying. Read. Now concerning the things whereof ye write unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Why? So you can focus. You can stay focused on the work. You can stay focused on the mission. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To do what? To avoid fornication. That's why I said, Ray, that's not realistic in today's time. So Paul told the Israelites that lived in Corinth, he said, to avoid fornication, to avoid you running around here sleeping with every woman you see. What? Let every man have his own wife. Did he say wives, plural? Let every man have his own wife. One, get a wife so you don't end up at a strip club, so right. you don't end up at a whorehouse, mm -hmm. so you don't end up at a brothel, so you don't end up on division, living 12 o'clock at night, trying to pay for some action. Get a wife. So everything you need can be at home. Read. And let every woman have her own husband. Oh, he didn't leave the women out. Because you got women that say, oh, no, 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 no. I want to be by myself. I'm married to Jesus. Yeah, right. Get married. Same one, say that. They at the club. They at the factory. They at Mr. Cheese. They at the little lounges on Pulaski late night. They at the fiesta on the block. They at the block party. But they say they gonna be by themselves. Read. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. It's even laws on that. What is that saying? The husband cannot deny sex to the wife. The wife cannot deny sex to the husband. That's why I said you get you a wife. You get all that satisfaction at home and not look for it on the street. But we talked about what? What God will do if you don't listen to him and what he'll do if you do listen to him. He'll bless you. Give me all um, the room 4 and 28. Because what we got to do as a people, we got to come back to God. We got to stop looking for God in the wrong places. We're not going to find God in the church. This is what God is in His Word. We, find God in the church. No. Think about it. How many churches is in Humble Park? Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Same thing I said. I go on the south side, I go down Houston, it's 300 and some churches. And it'd be like 30 some birds. Church is not where God is at. We've tried church. So don't go to church? Why? Church is not helping us. What about uh, fellowship? Read. Fellowship. Very good. My answer that. Read. Baruch chapter 4 verse 28. Uh -huh. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, uh -huh. so being returned, seek him 
ten times more. Uh huh. Read it again. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so our mind was to go away from God. Doing what we want to do, doing what pleases us, right? But now that you know what you got to do, read. So being returned, seek him ten times more. We being returned right now. How? This message is being told to you. The message of God, the rules of God is being told to you right now, right? Saying what? For you to change, for you to repent, for you to follow his instructions. Read. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, uh -huh. so being returned, seek him ten times more. You got to seek God ten times more. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't put it off. Don't procrastinate. Take that flyer, read the information, and come deal with us. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth